there we have it. The long road home in all its insta-consumable glory. Three weeks of biking adventure in less than 40 seconds. With the average human's attention span decreasing at an alarming rate, concessions must be made. I might not like it, but that's the world we live in these days. But in case there are any other dinosaurs out there, stay tuned for the director's cut. Last year, just as France came out of the first Covid confinement, we set off on our Tour des Alpes. We were both feeling a little frustrated about having to cancel some of our plans due to travel restrictions, but then Carol had a cool idea. Since we couldn't travel very far, why not try to make the travelling part of the adventure? By taking our bike instead of the car, we could have a fun time visiting the crags right next to our home and at the same time reduce our carbon footprint. There was just one small detail. How do you carry a one-year-old and all your gear on a bike? Simple. We'd actually been training Arthur for a trip like this for a while and he loved riding in his trailer. With Arthur in one trailer and all the gear packed in another, off we went. Despite being right there in our backyard, we had so much fun and realised there and then that adventure is exactly what you make of it. This year, we decided to take our bikes to the Alps and ride them all the way back home. Ironically, we actually had less distance to cover than our trip around the Alpes, but with a whole load of climbing thrown into the mix, we knew it was probably going to be a step up. We'd set off from Briançon and make our way southwest, passing amazing cliffs like Seyus, Orpierre and saint Léger. I imagine we'd have similar feelings to those on our ride around the Alpes, but set amongst the beauty and majesty of the big alpine peaks. The mountains did not disappoint, but we can't exactly say the same for the weather. As planned, it's raining. As planned, we're gonna have to do nearly 20k in the rain. This we went climbing. And the good news is tomorrow is the whole day of rain, so... In an ideal world, we'd probably have started the trip later in the year, making the most of the good weather in the mountains and travelling with the change of seasons towards autumn in the south. The not so insignificant detail of Carol being four months pregnant, however, basically meant it was now or never. By the end of day two, we were soaked to the skin and I'd forgotten what my fingers and toes felt like. Arthur, however, didn't really understand all the fuss. His trailer kept him warm and dry and he had honey cakes on demand whenever he wanted them. It's a hard life. Yeah. On day three, we were joined by our friend Louis Jandel. Louis is pretty handy on a bike so we felt Arthur would be in good hands for the ride up to Seuss. Seuss is a crag that needs no introduction, nor does its long approach. But with e-bikes, it's a walk in the park. Yay, Arthur, we made it! Watching Arthur scramble the last few metres to the cliff made me realise just how much he's grown in one year. It was on our last bike and climb trip that he'd just started walking, or more precisely, falling everywhere. Nowadays, he's pretty much autonomous. He's able to climb and jump and run around and it's easy to forget that he's still just a baby. Time moves so fast and I'm always reminding myself to cherish every moment. As much as I could talk about Arthur all day, this is supposed to be a climbing movie. We chose one of the older sectors of Soyuz, the Cascade, basically because we're gluttons for punishment. It did not disappoint. Stiff grades and slippery rock might not be everyone's cup of tea, but even with the polish, you can't not marvel at the incredible rock. From giant jugs you can fit your whole arm inside, to delicate slopers that tease you into thinking there might be more, the rock here feels like it's been made for climbing. From cruxy, bouldery test pieces to never-ending resistance nightmares, the roots are so good they seem almost sculpted by a greater power. And no, I'm not talking about Jibé Tribu. All this is set against that amazing background, and you can't help but feel lucky to be a climber. The long ride from Seyus to Orpia was one of great highs and lows. Some of the best single track of the trip through the flowing grey earth was followed swiftly by a broken trailer. I found an iron monger, he's four kilometres from here and he's waiting for us. I honestly thought our trip was over. But after a speedy repair thanks to Theo, the friendliest ironman you could ever wish to meet, and we were on our way again, racing the grey clouds that had threatened us all day. Well, there's about 10 kilometres left to go, so we are boosting it to Orpierre, in the hope that we arrive before all that starts to fall from the sky. The camping at Orpierre reminded me of holidays as a kid, and I hope that Arthur would one day look back on these memories as fondly as I do with mine. Believe it or not, I'd never climbed at Orpia before, but Carol had summed it up so perfectly that it felt like returning to an old friend. Steep, basic, with very few tufas, 
It reminded me a lot of some of the limestone cliffs in the UK, yet the village and the bars below made the place feel more like Kalimnos or Rodiar, a real holiday vibe. One of the best things about this trip was really seeing the scenery change as we moved away from the big mountains of the Alps and rode closer and closer to Provence and the Valley of the Rhone. We've driven through this area countless times, but from the window of a car, you just can't appreciate all the fine details. Riding a bike forces you to slow down, to look around and become aware of your surroundings. Yet at the same time, you can move fast enough to cover many kilometers in a single day and really see the landscape change around you. We'd climbed a lot at Saint Leger earlier this year, but always at the south face. Arriving later in the year allowed us to sample the less frequented north face, and it was incredible to see how different it felt while still retaining all of the usual qualities of Saint Leger. It would also be the final day of lead climbing for Carol, and after climbing one of the classic 8As, she decided that it was time to move on to easier routes and a top rope for the remainder of her pregnancy. Just over the other side of the mountain, Le Carrier de Maupas is perhaps my favourite cliff of our little tour. An ancient Roman quarry with some of the best lines you can find in the south of France. You're literally climbing over ancient history. The Prumen Show, bolted by Antonin Rhodes, is one of the best of its grade I've ever climbed anywhere. It's simply stunning. Where's next, Carolina? Pretty much home. Pretty much home. A mini meltdown from Arthur put a stop to our plans to climb his first multi-pitch in the spectacular Dantel de Montmarais. To be fair to Arthur, it was more the fault of his parents' poor planning, and at the end of the day, we could still enjoy some amazing hiking and biking. As we left the hills behind us, the flat expanse of the Valley of the Rhone was well appreciated, with temperatures heading well into the mid-30s. After a quick pit stop in the Roman city of Orange for some ice cream energy, we decided to make a last minute change of plan and add one final cliff to our list. Whilst maybe not as spectacular as Le Dantel, the little local training cliff of Gargantua definitely has a special place in our hearts. Here we are. Oh. Wow, look Arthur. Gargantua. Well, it's been a while, we've not been here. Ready? Gargantua is a bit like an outdoor climbing gym. Almost all the holes are chipped, all the quick draws are in place and it's dry in almost any weather. With the majority of routes in the 8th grade and an almost unlimited number of connections possible, I've no idea how many days we've spent hanging from these holes. The steep roof wasn't exactly perfect for Caro, whose belly at this point was really starting to get big, but we still enjoyed a great day with some friends before jumping back on the bike and riding the final kilometres towards home. What do you think, little man? Are you happy? Are you ready to go on your bike? Is Rabbit with you? What about you, Yannick? Do you have Rabbit with you? No Rabbit. No Rabbit, oh no. What are you going to do? Shelter. Yannick's going to demonstrate how the shelter is going to work for the four of us. Why is it too attached? 